temperature check. Yeah, so this is my office. Welcome to my office. Empire 2 1 Josh Fred, Channel Lake Altimeter 2962. Ready to contact a mile west of the uh, Channel Lake Airport. And on your way out, you're cleared to uh, contact here. questions from yesterday. If you weren't a fighter pilot, what would I be doing? <laughs> you know... Viper 3 knows departure, I didn't dare put it out to Viper 3, flash, climbing 16-5. Viper 3, radar contact, over to racetrack. And Viper 3, reset, transponder, squad 4764. Viper, uh, that's kind of an interesting question. Um, for me, uh, I never always wanted to be a fighter pilot, but my passion kind of developed uh, halfway through high school for both doing the military and flying. You know, believe it or not, uh, before I wanted to do that, uh, I wanted to be a video game designer because I <laughs> am uh, I'm a mega nerd. Um, so, you know, I think I think the important thing to say here is that. Yep. Yep. Regardless of where you come from in life, uh, be it, you know, uh, doing sports growing up. That problem check one is 2932 Playing video games growing up, reading books, whatever uh, you choose to do or choose to like, um, any type of person can be a fighter pilot. Uh, it really just takes three things, hands, head, and heart, uh, and uh, the hands just come after time. So attitude and effort are what it takes to, to be good at anything in life, let alone being a fighter pilot. Uh, and if you just keep at it and fight for what your passions Roger, are. Viper 1, airborne passing 2000 for 15.5. Viper 1, no departure, item. Uh, you can get to uh, this spot, so. Yeah, I don't know. I guess the message for all of that is to say that, you know, regardless of where you come from in life, um, if you fight hard enough uh, and make someone else tell you no in life uh, to the things that you want to do, then at least uh, when you grow up and get past those moments in your life, you won't regret uh, and you won't ask yourself the question of what if, what if I did that? So yeah, fight for your dreams, fight for your passions, uh, and uh, you can get there. But yeah, long story short, if I wasn't a fighter pilot, I would be a video game designer. <laughs> you might be able to see off to the right here, I'm not sure if you can or not, but this is Isabella Lake, so this is the start of uh, one of our routes uh, that we uh, fly out here in uh, Las Vegas. Second. Look how low the water is. Look up. Oh, the reservoir, no water. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's super low. Yeah, Isabella Lake. Um, so this part of the, the route, there's actually a lot of housing and development, so they like you to stay high until, uh, until you're away. So, you know, in the Air Force, we really try and be good stewards of the community. Um, and not just rip around uh, and annoy everyone every day. I know it <laughs> It happens. Say altitude, but, four one, six five. Uh, one is at 10-5. One's in descent to 7-5. I'll maintain level there. Visual. In the descent. Yes, we try and be good stewards of the community and not uh, bother uh, in, you know, interrupt daily life for people if uh, if we can help it. So that's kind of the accommodations we'll do here and just normal training sorties. A little uncommon, Viper 1, two ship F-16s entering the Sidewinder at Point Alpha. 
Uh, the top speed that I've flown is actually Mach 1.85 um, in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska when I used to fly with the uh, United States Air Force Aggressor Squadron uh, out of there. So Mach 1.85, it really depends on temperature, uh, but at the surface, um, the speed of sound is about 660 knots, uh, so Mach 1.85 is, you know, north of 1,000, so 1,100. 11 November 1545 Gulf, contact Salt Lake Center on 133.45, get it? So well over 1,000 miles an hour, uh, I guess I've flown, so there you go. Yeah, so one of the questions that you guys uh, asked me to provide is, you know, what's the most dangerous situation I've ever been in in the F-16? Um, well, you know, I think the more experience you get in any fighter platform or any, any airplane in general, uh, the more you find that there's always going to be that day for a guy, right? Um, and you just hope that that day doesn't come uh, very often, if ever, right? Uh, for me, I had a critical fuel leak over the middle of the Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and Guam uh, a couple years back and had to actually divert into Wake Island. So it's a, it's a remote atoll in the middle of the Pacific. So um, thankfully we had a, a tanker with us. So I was able to uh, refuel and uh, make sure that all that was good to go um, and uh, bring it down into the, the field. Um, and also I think the most, the most important part is I was only about 50 to 100 miles west of Wake Island when the uh, situation happened. So um, up, believe it or not, you know, up. you can talk about, oh, I did a good job or, or, or whatnot, but really I think this whole story, the moral of it is that mutual support in the Air Force is so, so important, you know. Sure, this is a single seat fighter and I'm sitting in an F-16 all by myself, but uh, it, the the benefit of mutual support, since we're normally flying, flying with three other individuals um, and three other F-16s with us, uh, cannot be understated. That day, I had uh, one wingman with me. Uh, he was actually my flight lead for the day, and I was the wingman. Um, he backed me up in the checklist and uh, the uh, decision-making pro process, uh, and we decided to turn it around and bring it into Wake Island, which is a, uh, a plan to divert for us, uh, but one that guys do not go to very often. So we brought it back down and brought it down to that airfield, and uh, everything was safe uh, and good from that point on. So yeah, I mean, uh, I think um, it's one thing to say that, you know, you need a lot of experience, discipline, and judgment to be able to be uh, a good fighter pilot or a good aviator in general, but, but also, you know, you're not alone in the battle, and the Air Force does a great job of making the training pipeline in the way uh, that by the time we get to this point in our careers that we're as ready as we'll ever be, so, so yeah. Check one, three is seven foot air drive. Four, six, five. Yeah. You'll notice that uh, throughout this entire low level, I'm uh, constantly checking uh, left and right, especially in the turns. Um, something that can never be underestimated when you're flying at low altitude is that the time between everything being fine and everything being over uh, is very small. So um, whenever you're in a turn, you know, I'm constantly belly checking to make sure that, that I'm still uh, remaining clear of all terrain uh, and everything um, that could be a danger uh, for the for the F-16. The low-level environment is definitely not a regime where you want to be doing other things other than uh, just visually and aggressively uh, clearing outside. It's kind of the old mantra we always use in the aviation community. If you need to do something and you're at low altitude then, uh, and you have a problem or need to fix something, then the uh, phrase we use is climb to cope, right? So climb first, aviate, navigate, communicate, get to a higher altitude, aka a safer one, so that you can divide your time uh, between something else to do something else uh, um, and stay safe. Josh, 
Joshua, five for three, two shift F-16s with you, direct Kentucky for RTB. Viper 3, two ships, sir. Viper uh, 3, Roger. You, you, are you looking for flight following or are you just going to uh, cancel out the boundary? We'll take flight following, following in Kentucky and then be far from there. Uh, I'm sorry, taken. Viper will take flight following until we egress the airspace, then we'll go VFR to be Viper Zero Three, Roger. You're clear at Sushi's airspace to the east exit below flight level 180, and once you hit Tucky off, so I'm terminated. Viper Three, we'll go direct to Spout. It's getting bumpy out here. Josh Fred, Channel Lake Altimeter 2962, right in contact a mile west of the uh, Channel Lake Airport, and on your way out, you're cleared to uh, Poncho 3. is 5 to the north of Craig for initial. Bingo. 5 3 north, Tyler, Craig, one way to your left. 5 3 left to left. Tyler, scooter 1, in sequence, from a 3 right. Scooter 1, runway 3 right, one up and wait. Scooter 3 right, left to wait. Everyone across Delta. Bingo. Everyone across Delta. Back up box. Go. Back up box, we're Three. We are left to the left, runway three. Four. Shoot one, runway three, right. Wind zero, three, zero, two, three, gets two, eight. The clear for take off, change departure. Just get the take off for six. Three, right. Slow in 300.
kid for sure. Three left, main secure stop, three left. Harbor three, one, three left, one zero three zero at two four, got two eight, clear to land. Harbor three, clear to land, three left. Dusty winds. Looks like a. Not too bad. Harbor four, go. Harbor four, Roger. Alright, I've been Flip. Thanks for flying with me today. We'll see you next time. Peace.